Hello and welcome to this exciting project. In this project, we're going to build a recommendation system similar to what Amazon is having. So if you go to Amazon page, right, and then you click on an item. If you click on an item like that, you see that if you come all the way down, you see that they are recommending some items to you based on what you searched or selected. So they are using recommendation system to be able to recommend related products to you. So we're going to build the same thing over here. This is a real world application and implementation of data science in action. Using the concepts that we learned under the recommendation system lessons in the course. So you can see that over here we have several products over here that we have listed. Okay, quite a lot of them. I'm going to show you how you can build this page right from the scratch and then integrate your recommendation engine into this one. So we're going to start from here, right? You see that we have the data set and then we are going to use Amazon data set. So you can see Amazon products.csv. We're going to use that one. And then we have a whole lot of products that we're going to use over here. We're going to build a robust recommendation system. If we go all the way down here, right, you see that we are implementing the TFIDF and then we're creating some functions for content based recommendation and then hybrid recommendation, right? Just like we learned in the course, we're using collaborative filtering and and then content based. So if you come into the app itself, where we are using all the data that we have, all the data that you see on the CSV file that we're going to use, we have populated the data over here. And I'm also going to show you how you can even get the product images. I'm going to show you how to do that. So if a user comes to your app, come to your e-commerce app over here, they can search based on the category or they can type whatever that they want, or they can search based on category and subcategory. Okay, so let's perform some search and then do some recommendation and then you can see so let's say that the person search for say let's say women clothing if the person select that as a main category then we have a subcategory that will automatically be populated over here accordingly okay so we are using this concept I created a code over here you see that we have main category right so based on the main category the user select we're going to have the respective subcategory of that right and then we are filling that drop down with that okay so if we select say let's say western wear and then we click on filter you can see that we have all the western wares over here right and then here the user can select any item at all right so let's say the user selects this one okay now it will take you to another page like this where we're going to have a whole lot of recommendations. So you see that we have the product and then the rating, the price, and then we also show in some reviews of the products. Okay, and then you can see some recommendation. Now this recommendation, okay, it's based on the recommendation that we are building over here. We've integrated that one into the code that we are using to deploy that. So if you come into the PyCharm and you go to the app.py, which is what you're going to use, right? You can see over here, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do it so that you'll be able to build this one. This one is just a demo for you to see how the app works. Okay, so you can see that I'm integrating the function. You see that I have content based recommendation. I have hybrid. Okay, then I build a collaborative and content. Okay, so if the user click on any item, right, then it's going to call this. I have this function over here. See that recommendation, right? Based on the product the user has selected, we're going to make recommendations of similar or related products. Okay, using the algorithm that we've built. Okay. And then I have a page which is actually calling these functions to build the recommendation engine. Okay, so that's what we are doing. That's why when you click on any product, you see that you have recommended products and then you have products related to this item and you can see they are very much uh, related. Okay, they're very much related. Let's click on say, um, let's click on this one. If we click on this one, you see the items that are related to that. Okay. And then you see the recommendations that we are doing. Let's go to the home page. So I'm going to go back here and then we can search anything. Let's search for say jeans, right? If we search for jeans over here, right? You see that it's showing us all jeans, right? And if you click on any of the, um, I mean, any of the genes here, it's going to give you a recommendation. Now, the recommendation, you will not search genes, then it will recommend, say, a toothpaste or bread for you.
it will recommend a gene or very closely related item, other forms of genes or different kinds of genes for you, because that's what our recommendation engine is building, right? It's going to calculate the cosine similarity. And then based on their similarity matrices, it's going to compare them and see which items are related, right? Just like we were doing in the recommendation class in the course. Okay, we use the cosine similarity to see which items are similar and then we make the recommendation. So this is a real world project. That's how Amazon does it on their page to recommend similar products to you. So that's what we are doing. This is the kind of project that you can show to the recruiters that you've built something real, right? Using real world data, that you have a practical hands-on experience of what, what you're talking about. All right, let's, let's go back to the homepage of the app, right? So, I mean, over here too, you can select any, any item at all, right? And then you, you're also going to get recommendation of that. So if I select this one, you see that the products that are related to this one, they are very, very much related. Okay, we're the same, I mean, similar kinds of products that will be recommended to you. Okay, and even the products that are related to our women clothing. Okay, they'll all be in the same category or subcategory that will be recommended to the user. Quite a lot. And I mean, we have the data set, but you don't have the images, right? I'm going to show you how you can get the images to populate the pages like that. If you come over here, I built this web scraper, okay, which is extracting the product images live from Google and then populate it on the product page like this for you. So if I run it, it's going to create a folder like this, right? product name I mean product images you see it has product images over here so I just add one here so that will create a new one or maybe let me add product images too so that I will scrape the images live for you to see okay now if I run this file it's going to create if I go into the folder right you see that it's creating product images too and then inside that it's going to scrap all the images and then put them inside product image too okay now you can see that it's showing, I mean, it's downloading all the images, right? So it's going to download all these images. And these are the images that you're going to be using for your, I mean, to populate it on, on this page. Okay, for the respective products. So we, if you see here, right, we get the product name. I have this function called search product images. So I put the product name over there and then that is the product name that we are going to add to this Google link. And then it's going to search it directly on Google. So you can see that it's scrapping the images right from Google. Okay, just like that. And I'm storing them as product ID.jpg because when I'm populating the product page, I want to fetch unique product images for the unique products so that I wouldn't fetch, say, image of laptop for, say, sugar. That would be weird. Okay, scraping them right from Google like that. So, I mean, depending on how many images that you want to scrape, right? And then once you do that, it's going to populate it on your page like that for you. That's how you build a page like this. I mean, with the images that you have scraped and also the data that you have. So we have the, if you go into the data set, you see that we have the name that is the product name. So we are searching the product name on Google. That's what this one is doing. It's searching the product name on Google. And then you get the images like that. It will scrape the images live for you. And then we're going to use that one to populate the product page like this. All right, so I mean, whatever the user will search over here or whatever the user will select over here will be able to make the right recommendation for them. And you can see that I have the sub, I mean, this, this is the main category. So if, for instance, we click on the appliances here, you see that all the things that have been shown here are within that appliances. All right, and then you can select wherever that you want from here and then you get a recommendation. All right, so if the user, let's say the user selects this one here, you see that if you go to the page over here, it's also showing items that are related to air conditioner. And you can see other appliances being shown to the user. So the recommendation engine is working very, very fine. Okay, it's working very, very well for us. All right, and then if you go to the main page too, the user can either log in or log out. If I click on log out, it will log the user out and then the user can either log in if the user has an account or they can sign up. They can click on sign up and then put their details to sign up. If they sign up, then they can log into their account. So I'm just going to log in over here.
all right if they log in then they get access to the app like this right and then they can search whatever they want so i can search maybe jeans or something whatever the user want to search and then they will get the response respectively all right so this is really really working very well right and i'm going to walk you through step by step how you can build this one from scratch for your own use case I mean, you can add more functionalities to this app and make it maybe fully functional. And then we can also deploy it on AWS or Google Cloud so that everyone anywhere in the world can get access to this app and then be able to use it for product search and recommendation. All right. OK, so you can see the recommendation is working very fine. If we select a phone like this, you see the other things that have been recommended are related to the product that we have selected. And you can see the products that are related, right? you see that it's another phone or it's a phone accessory or something that belongs to appliances okay which is really cool all right you can see all of that okay all right and then if you go back to i mean this one is still running we are still scraping the images so you can see all images that we have scraped so far see that it's still doing it so i will show you how you can build all of that from scratch all right, so let's get started and I will walk you through step by step.